Hello, my third grade friends. This is Dr. Davis, and this is Lesson 9 of Classification of Animals. You all have done an amazing job, and we now know all five of the animal groups. So let's review from our last lesson. What are the characteristics of mammals? Do you remember those things that we learned about? Mammals are warm-blooded. They're also vertebrates. Remember, they all have backbones. They have fur or hair as a body covering. They also have mammary glands that produce milk and they give birth to live babies. Those were the characteristics that we talked about. Now, today, purpose for listening, animals from these five vertebrate groups live all over the world in many different habitats. Today, you will be hearing about vertebrate animals in seven very different places around the world. Take a look at this slide. All my best friends represent vertebrates. This is what we call a mnemonic device, and it will help you remember the five groups. The beginning letter of each of these words is also a beginning letter of the five groups. For example, A, amphibians. What is the M? What animal group? Mammals. B is for what animal group? Yes, birds. F is for fish. You all are doing great. And R is for reptiles. And all five of these groups are vertebrates. All my best friends represent vertebrates. That's what you can remember in your head. And then you remember each letter represents one of the animal groups. Now that you've learned about each vertebrate group, you know about many characteristics that taxonomists use to classify these animals. Who wants to try naming the five animal groups that make up vertebrates in the animal kingdom? Good job. Why do scientists classify organisms? Because there are so many living things on Earth, it gives scientists a way of studying them by showing their relationships. And how do they classify them? They look for common or shared characteristics. What are some of these common characteristics? You've learned that some animals are warm-blooded and others are cold-blooded. Some are vertebrates and others are invertebrates. Very good. You've also learned that there are many other ways to classify animals into smaller and smaller groups. The scientific classification system, taxonomy, uses these names kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species to describe the groups from largest to smallest. When they classify animals, taxonomists compare and contrast animal habitats, physical characteristics, skin coverings, feeding habits, and reproduction. Today we're going to look at seven different locations on planet Earth, one on each of the continents of the world. We can use our new skills to practice classifying a few of the animals that live in each place. First stop, the American Desert. Here are some examples of animals you may find in the North American desert, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, the Gila Woodpecker, the Desert Bighorn Sheep in the background, the Roadrunner, the Bandit, Gila Monster, the Bobcat, and the Turkey Vulture. Can you find all of those things? Just by looking at these animals, are you able to classify them? The bobcat and the sheep are both covered in fur, so we know that they are what? Mammals. What about the Gila monster? It's a reptile, one of only two venomous lizards in America. What kind of animal is this rattlesnake? Yes, it is a reptile, it is venomous as well, and it is one of few reptiles that gives birth to live young. Great job. So now let's move on to the Amazon rainforest in South America. Native to the rainforest are the spotted jaguar, the green anaconda, the three-toed sloth, the red-bellied piranha, the blue and yellow macaw, the pink-toed tarantula, the caiman, 
which looks like a small crocodile. The anaconda and the caiman are both covered in scales. The bird should be an easy one to spot. The only one with wings and feathers is the macaw. And the piranha should be familiar to all of you. These are Apollo's fish relatives. The jaguar and the sloth both belong to the same group. Who can name that group? Great, they are mammals. We can tell because they are covered in fur. As you have learned, mammals give birth to live babies. Does this dark, hairy spider belong to one of the vertebrate groups that we've studied? No, the pink-toed tarantula is an invertebrate. It's cold-blooded, has an exoskeleton, and is a member of the arachnid group. Let's look at some of the animals that make their homes high in the Alpine mountains of Europe. What do you see in the background there in the rocks? The rock ptarmigan lives in the Alps. So does the black alpine salamander, the marmot, the golden eagle, the Apollo butterfly, and the pine marten. Which one do you think is not a member of any of the vertebrate groups that we studied? Yes, the butterfly is an invertebrate and is classified in the largest group of animals on Earth, insects. Yes, I'm glad you remembered. The black alpine salamander shares characteristics with both a lizard and a frog. Think about how you would classify it. It's a moist skin amphibian, but an unusual one that lives only on land and gives birth to fully develop live young. What two-legged feathered animal do you see? Yes, the birds pictured are the ptarmigan and the golden eagle. And mammals, are there any fur-covered creatures in the Alps? Yes, the marmot and the pine marten. The Ganges Delta of India on the continent of Asia is home to swamps, forests, and creeks. The animals that live there include the black-crowned night heron, the wild boar, the olive ridley turtle, and the Ganges River dolphin, and the India python, the blue-eared kingfisher, the mugger crocodile, and the chittle. Can you spot the cold-blooded reptiles here? You bet, the crocodile, the turtle, and the python are all representatives of the reptile group. Which ones are warm-blooded mammals? Yes, the boar or wild pig, and the chittle, a common deer of the area. The polluted waters of the Ganges River have ruined the habitat for a number of animals. And this river dolphin is endangered because of the river's pollution. Only one of four river dolphin species in the world, it is a mammal just like its ocean-loving relatives. The Ganges River dolphin is sometimes called a blind dolphin. Each of its eyes lacks a lens to give it clear vision, but it still uses its eyes to help find its direction. And of course, our feathered Friends of the sky, the kingfisher and the heron are both birds. I bet you've seen pictures of many large game animals that make their homes in the savannas of Africa. They include the giraffe, the elephant, the hyena, the wildebeest, the lion, the zebra, and the impala. All of these animals belong to the same group of vertebrates. What are they? Yes, mammals. Birds like the hornbill and the quilea live there as well. And venomous reptiles, snakes like the gaboon and the black mamba, are deadly to their prey in the savannas. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is home to many different sea animals. Animals here include the bottlenose dolphin, the anemone fish, the blue spotted stingray, the box jellyfish, the black tipped reef shark, and the leatherback sea turtle. Is the jellyfish a fish? Who remembers? 
No, in spite of its name, the jellyfish is an invertebrate and has no gills. Be sure to notice the jellyfish's many long tentacles. So do you think that the anemone fish is a fish or not? Yes, it is indeed a fish, also called the clownfish because of its colorful markings, and it lives among the tentacles of another invertebrate, the sea anemone. The sea turtle belongs to the reptile group, and you probably remember that the dolphin is a milk-producing mammal that breathes with its lungs. How about the shark? Yes, it is a fish too. It breathes with gills, and unlike the dolphin, does not provide milk for its young. And the stingray? A fish too, relative of the shark. Finally, let's look at Antarctica, the southernmost continent and one of the coldest places on Earth. Emperor penguins live in its icy waters along with blue whales and humpback whales. Leopard seals, skewa, and snow petrels spend half the year in darkness of this frozen coastal region. Only two vertebrate animals are found on the land of Antarctica. What are they? That's right, mammals and birds. You learn that these two groups also share another common characteristic as well. Mammals and birds are both warm-blooded. The energy in the food they eat is used to warm their bodies and keep them from freezing. These Antarctica animals survive in harsh frozen conditions and they are largely dependent on krill, tiny shrimp-like crustaceans and exoskeletons that live in the waters beneath the ice packs. They are the primary or main source of food for the predators of Antarctica. As you can imagine, living in the extreme cold of Antarctica presents a major challenge to cold-blooded animals. A few fish have adapted in an interesting way to survive in the cold waters surrounding Antarctica. The ice fish has a special chemical in its body that acts like an antifreeze, and it keeps them from freezing. A few invertebrates have found other interesting ways to survive in the cold temperatures of Antarctica. Some might survive by living in the fur of mammals or in the feathers of birds, close to the warmth of their warm-blooded hosts. Now you've seen a sample of the animals that live on each of the seven continents. There are so many interesting facts about Earth's animals. Before I go, let's share one interesting fact that you have learned about vertebrate animals. Think for a moment about the interesting fact you wish to share. Now I would like for you to turn to someone that's maybe home with you and share your vertebrate fact. It's been so much fun for me to be with you again. I'm so proud of all that you've learned about the animal kingdom over the past few days. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, I encourage for you to keep your eyes open. As you see an animal or read about an animal, think about how you would classify it. Next time we're together, perhaps you can tell me about the discoveries. Until then, Goodbye. So now, friends, it's time for our comprehension questions. This time, your comprehension questions are going to be a little different. You're going to see an image, and I'll ask you a question based on the image that you see. This is our first one. Take a look at this slide once again. How do you know the roadrunner is not a reptile? And this is the roadrunner here. How do you know that's not a reptile? Yes, it has feathers, so you, that automatically tells you what? It's a bird. Yes, it does not have scales or the hard scaly skin because that's what reptiles have. Great job. Let's look at the next image. Which vertebrate group is not represented in the picture? So you've got to look at all of these, so take a moment. Okay, let's take a look. All right, you have a bird there. Mammal, another mammal, a crocodile is a reptile, snake is a reptile, fish. So which group is not represented? 
No amphibians are shown here. If you said amphibians, you are correct. Good catch. To what vertebrate group do shark and stingray belong? Think about that. And this is our shark and our stingray. If you said the fish group, you are correct once again, because we know that they are fish because they have gills and they live in the water or they are aquatic. Great job. And now it's time for a brain break. Okay, friends, so we have learned about all five animal groups. So once again, you're going to do some things related to an animal. This time, I would like for you to pretend to be a dolphin. What would you do to pretend to be a dolphin? First of all, tell me what animal group. Yes, there are mammals, not fish. So dolphins, they do lots of jumping as they're in the water. Yes. The next one, act like a bear. Would you be a grizzly bear and walking slowly around? Would you be a polar bear swimming in the cold water? What kind of bear can you be? Next one I want you to do is growl. What animals growl? All kinds of animals growl, yes. A dog growls, a wolf can growl. Great job. And the last one, I would like for you to slide like a snake. Now you may be at a place that you can really slide along the floor, but if not, just let your hand do the sliding. Great job. Now let's get back to work. Our word work for today is the word tentacles. In the read aloud, you heard the clownfish lives among the tentacles of another invertebrate, the sea anemone. Say the word tentacles. Tentacles. Tentacles are long, flexible body parts that stick out around the head or the mouth and are used for feeling or grasping. Plants can also have tentacles. Let's take a look. We've got tentacles here and tentacles here. The mouth opening of a jellyfish is surrounded by its tentacles, which help capture its food. The hair-like tentacles of a sundew plant produce a sticky glue, which attracts insects. The tentacles then bend inward, and then the sides of the leaf roll together and trap the insect prey. Have you ever seen the tentacles of an animal or a plant? Where were you? Now, what word have we been talking about today? Tentacles. What part of speech is it? It is a noun because it is a thing. Great job. Friends, you have done an amazing job learning about the classification of animals. We have learned about all five animal groups, and today we've even looked at the habitats of these animal groups. You have done great, and I am so proud of your hard work. See you next time.